Good evening guys, welcome back to the channel and to this video review of this particular piece. Uh, I've already done the unboxing video of this one so I'm not going to uh, go through the packaging uh, you know, much again. This is, yes of course, the G-Shock uh, Rangeman which I uh, got uh, about uh, two weeks more than that ago and have been testing it out and enjoying and I, I, I feel I've gotten to know this watch uh, uh, quite a bit now to be able to do this particular review so without further ado uh, let's get on with it so this is of course the G-Shock Rangeman GW9400 uh, this particular model is Dash 1 which is the original black plane uh, issue uh, really the the default uh, color option for the range band. you know they do come in so many uh, different other limited editions and of course also the uh, standard uh, editions come in the green uh, and I, I think the desert camouflage version is still also available um, so this uh, is a 53.5 millimeter case so you know that that's uh, across uh, right there on the width um, it is 18 millimeter stick, so it is chunky. Now, Casio do tend to quote uh, their case sizes in the maximum in uh, diameter, but you know, arguably, maybe they should be quoting you know button position uh, dimension, which is really what uh, traditionally watches do quote. You know, you don't quote the crown uh, dimension on the diver's watch. You don't quote the the pushes on the chronograph so you know maybe a, a more accurate feel of the watch would be you know that dimension there you know from button to button uh, where the case size is and that uh, as I've measured it is around 46 millimeters so you know to get get give you a feel of really how big or really not big uh, the, this particular size of G-Shock is it's not uh, 53 millimeter diameter circle by any means all the way around it is smaller than that uh, obviously as you can see on the construction here uh, so you know the classic G-Shock resin and in this particular case you know I, I really think it's you know it, it's a higher grade of resin you know compared to the standard uh, you know G-Shocks like for example the, the last one I reviewed uh, which has the tide and moon data that one had a bit of a sheen uh, you know on the on the resin this one is a bit matte and has a classier feel to it I feel you know is this a master of G thing I don't know you know if you're if you're an expert on G-Shocks let me know uh, if you have any inside information on that so you can see here it's got solid screws right not not the the false screws that you get on the uh, uh, some of the lower end uh, versions, you know, they, they make it look like there's a screw there, but really there isn't. This one actually is a, a steel screw uh, on the front there. The buttons are steel, and that that really has, um, I guess, pushes up the feel of this particular model. You know, it's not the plastic buttons that you find in uh, almost all of the mid to lower end G-Shocks. It's got that a steel um, light button up the front there and you know when I saw this model I always uh, fancied that look you know it looks almost like the you know a, a respirator I guess you know like a, a military a gas mask type of look and I wondered what it was I thought at first it was a sensor but no it is actually the light button the sensor cluster input is of course right there where it says triple sensor okay so um what else can I say? The steel cover on this sensor button is, as far as I know, unique. You know, there's no other watch that I know of in the Casio range that has this particular sensor button. So that's a special thing with the range, man. Of course, with just about all modern G-Shocks, it's got 200 meter water rating. Uh, it's got a positive LCD display, not like some of the uh, limited editions, editions have a negative display. And uh, I must say... I probably overall prefer the positive displays. I just find they're just easier to read compared to negative displays. There's you know varying opinions and subjective views on that. Uh, personally, I do find the positive displays just a little bit 
better for me in terms of visibility, readability in various conditions. Uh, this one is not sapphire, it is a mineral glass. So, you know, it's not uh, the higher end uh, level of sapphire, it's still mineral. Uh, you saw the lighting there, this is um, LED. It, it, it's a pretty good LED, I must say. It looks almost like EL uh, evenness in the lighting, but it is not EL, it is, it is LED. Okay, the movement, uh, this is the multifunction module 3410. It is tough solar, um, you know, uh, triple sensor, tough solar, so tough solar meaning uh, it, it, it's it's good enough uh, and powerful enough and efficient enough to supply uh, the demands of this module, which includes the triple sensor. The triple sensor, of course, is air pressure to give you ultimator and barometer rating, uh, a compass to give you direction, and a temperature sensor, which gives you, of course, a, a Celsius or Fahrenheit readout, depending on how you want to set it. Uh, this is radio controlled, so you can see under the Casio, it's got multi-band 6, so it does have atomic time sync with terrestrial antennas. It doesn't have the satellite wave scepter function. Uh, that, that really is a very high end of G-Shocks. This one is a terrestrial antenna uh, synchronization. Now, let's go through the functions. Uh, this, of course, is the basic timekeeping mode that you see here. PS for power save, P for uh, PM, uh, you know, AM, uh, PM. Uh, I've, I've set it at uh, AM, PM rather than 24 hour display, uh, you know, day and date there. Sensor buttons, so let's go through the sensors. Okay, so the, the single beat is for altimeter, and this is altimeter. You can see the differential display there on the dot matrix uh, part of the LCD at the very top. Uh, that's a trend display, of course, and that's the current readout of the estimated altitude. Triple sensor version 3 is uh, resolution to 1 meter, of course. And then if you look at the round eye on the, the 10, 11 o'clock position, there is a differential uh, indicator there of uh, the recent change. Now that admittedly is a little bit difficult to read. You, you have to squint a bit, uh, but you know, that is what it is. Second sensor readout is the compass. So if I, you know, put it, I guess facing directly in front of me. Yes, I am roughly facing west in this direction. And in that little eye, you can see where it's noted uh, the north heading is at present. So, you know, that, that's really how, uh, how the compass functions as you rotate. Right, the, the 12 o'clock position uh, indicates that particular heading readout that you see there. Okay, so that's the compass. And then the third function, as you can hear, Three beeps, so one beep altimeter, two beep compass, three beep for barometer and temperature sensor. And then you get the nice trend graph there on the dot matrix, as well as a, uh, a trend uh, indicator on that eye there. So you know that plus or minus 10 on that scale there, that's really the, the differential indicator that we're getting there. Okay, so that's, that's the nice sensor feature, all accessed by this unique button and each sensor mode has a unique beep to let you know exactly what you're getting into when you press the button. Uh, one thing to note is you go back to time, you go, when you press the sensor button, you go back into the last sensor that you use. So a nice little uh, thing that uh, you know, allows you to keep track of the same thing every time you go back into sensor mode. Uh, now, just to, to let you know, altimeter range is minus 700 to 10,000 meters in one meter resolution. Uh, the barometer ranges from 260 to 1100 hectopascals. Uh, you know, you get that differential graphs as you've seen. Uh, digital compass is in one degree. Uh, you, you've seen the one degree uh, resolution. And the thermometer goes from minus 10 to 60 degrees Celsius. All right, so let's go to the other standard modes uh, plus the non-standard modes. Okay, so world time, of course, is a standard mode in G-Shocks these days. Uh, that's UTC uh, denoted on the main screen there, and then the home time in the smaller display and the top part of the LCD. As you go down, of course, you're just cycling through uh, various cities, and this particular uh, uh, module has 48 cities, all 31 different time zones available. Okay, so yeah, that's just how you cycle through the cities. 
Next mode, stopwatch, and this is a thousand hour stopwatch at one one hundred resolution. You can see there, one one hundred of a second resolution, thousand hour limit. Timer is 24 hour limit with a one second countdown uh, as is pretty standard for uh, uh, many G-Shocks and Casios these days. The daily alarms, of course, five daily alarms with time signal. I won't even go through that, but I will show you how it sounds. Okay, that's really the standard alarm sound. Nothing too special about that. In addition to the standard modes that you've just seen, this, this one has sunrise, sunset. So sunrise time denoted on that uh, smaller uh, display there, 5.19, uh, sorry, sunset time, 5.19 p.m. And sunrise time, as you can see, it's, it's indicated sunrise there, 7.13 a.m. So, you know, it, we're near the winter solstice where I am. Uh, and then the date again, uh, telling you up the top there. You can actually cycle through. So, you know, going through uh, future dates, you can actually check uh, days in advance, probably as far as you have the patience to click, uh, you know, what particular sunrise, uh, sunset time in, in a future date that you want to check out. Okay, so that's a, the sunrise sunset function. This is recall mode, uh, and it does have a 40 memory or 40 records in the memory for recall, and you can actually record uh, any of the the uh, sensors uh, readout so altitude pressure direction you can also do a timestamp so you know very handy uh, that you can store 40 memories in here you can it does also automatically record maximum altitude minimum altitude uh, maximum ascending change uh, as well as descending change you know those are the kind of like the pro track uh, functions that have carried over to this particular module on the, the range man. Okay, so that's really most of the functions. This is the uh, receive mode, uh, and it does show you the last time this received a time signal from a terrestrial antenna. Unfortunately, in Australia, in the Southern Hemisphere, we are not in range of uh, any of the terrestrial antennas which are clustered in the northern hemisphere north america europe china japan of course um, so it's interesting that casio does actually market this particular watch in australia uh, I, I find that uh, quite curious but you know of course it is of high demand this is so popular so i guess if it sells why not you know why not market it if you travel you're going to receive a time signal uh, so you know, no loss there the battery life is quoted to be eight months on uh, uh, active use. And then if you let it go into power save use, uh, it, it should last uh, what, what is quoted to be 23 months, you know, a massive amount of time over, uh, well, nearly two years on the, the solar cell, rechargeable cell in this particular module. Uh, the strap, um, you know, it, it is fairly standard resin, but uh, it, it's got that, you know that double double teeth which you know really I, I i quite like you know there was then that gravity master that i reviewed earlier and so it's this wasn't too much of a surprise to me but but i do find i, I enjoy that and it's got a metal keeper with g-shock on it um check out the case back i, I really like this you know that wildcat uh range man shock resists you know various other details around the side they're 200 uh bar water resistant and or 20 bar water resistant the module number etc you know I, I i like that uh different case back so let's just try it on okay so here we go that's the wrist shot there i've done this before but you know just to show you again i find this very comfortable i you know it just sits so nicely it is so light and uh, of course it's a uh, you know, it's it's resin, it's a resin strap, so there's no steel band to weigh it down. It it's I, I really have enjoyed how this uh, how this just works. Um, okay, so what what I like about it? Well, you know, what can you say? It is a range man. You know, that look at the the iconic sporty uh, shapes of that design design of the resin case. Uh, it's mud and dust resistant, you know, it's a tough watch uh, with the mud and dust resistance. Uh, let me just state, 
I think Casio International took that off in the description. Uh, the G-Shock uh, International website took it off as well. I think that might be to support the marketing of their Mud Master because it, you know this definitely was listed as mud and dust resistant. Uh, if it's marketing related, well, you know, shame on you, Casio. You should have left that on, I think. So you know, you, you know, it's got unique features. It's got that that metal cover sensor button. Uh, it's got a one-touch stopwatch, which I, I haven't even mentioned yet. You know, you can in you know in time mode, you touch that button straight into stopwatch and you know it's timing go back into time mode and uh, you know that that eye now displays differently it's got that kind of flower pattern sun pattern showing you that the stopwatch is still working go back into stopwatch stop it and restart it and then it's back into the usual time mode okay so one touch stopwatch is it's you know that that's going to be so useful for for many people without having to click through into the mode to start that just touch that and it's timing straight away you know it's got the it's got a triple sensor it's tough solar it's got atomic time multi-band six sync it just does so much for so you know so little really you know this is msrp of 300 realistically you're paying a lot less than that for a you know a whole lot of watch function here what you know what could be better well you know i think el would be a nice upgrade that is a nice led light but you know just electroluminescence at the master of g would just be suitable uh, and then that eye you know it has been criticized it's hard to read and you know it, it is it is a bit hard to read you know the the divisions are small and it's not the largest eye there so I guess of all the functions, that's the one that has been a little bit more challenging uh, to use. And I, and I agree with the criticisms. Okay, so quick comment uh, lastly as to what are you getting if you get a Mudmaster. So, you know, GWG1000, ostensibly the upgrade mud and dust resistant watch to the range man. But nearly three times as much in terms of realistic treat, street price. What do you get? You're getting the, the hybrid mount uh, tough movement. You're getting vibration resistance, so not just shock resistant, but vibration resistance. Uh, you're getting the, the screw and crown with smart access function, of course, with the, uh, the tough movement digital analog display. Uh, you're getting sapphire on the glass and you're getting a lot more watch in terms of, uh, I guess, sheer mass and size. But, you know, I tell you what, the, the Mudmaster doesn't have uh, sunrise, sunset data. It's got a 24-hour stopwatch as opposed to a 1,000 hours on the range man. Uh, and it's got a 60-minute timer as opposed to 24 hours. Now, those are not make or break, uh, but it does mean that this module doesn't do everything that this does for you know a price that's a lot more you do get you know i guess you know admittedly what a cool looking watch uh but you know as a toss-up no doubt this gives a lot more value bang for buck no question the range man is it um so you know there you have it that's a a look uh my review of this very very popular watch uh and so you know, you really get so much for the 200 odd dollars that you might spend on this. Uh, let me know what you think, uh, if you have this, uh, how you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you guys again for watching this far. Click, uh, you know, a like and give me a subscribe to keep in touch. And as always, I'll catch you next time.